I wanted to talk a little bit today about energy independence. Yes, energy independence uh, that has been the subject of a lot of heated debate over the last couple of years. And from my experience, what I've seen on social media and elsewhere, pretty much everyone has a pretty broad misunderstanding of energy independence and what it means. Um, so I'll just give it to you straight. I'll explain it to you without all the politics from an expert's perspective, and I will say the vast majority of industry experts will agree with me on this subject. Um, many of them are compensated by different oil companies, um, different government organizations. Um, so they tend to kind of keep a lid on the truth about energy independence. So the problem with this term is that it has become politicized. Yeah. And basically what that means is there's no purity or truth left in it. What, and that happens with everything we politicize, right? So let's start with the EIA's definition. Uh, the EIA being the Energy Information Association. And uh, it is when we produce more energy than we consume. That, simply put, is their definition of energy independence. Um, the problem uh, with that definition is that it's far too broad. You see, the United States does produce a lot of energy, more than anyone on the planet, but we also consume a lot, more than anyone on the planet. So um, the issue here is that we don't produce enough of all of the different kinds of energy we use and rely on. Oil is our biggest source of energy, and we don't produce as much as we need. Uh, we produce more natural gas than we need, right? Um, and that is why we produce overall more energy than we consume. So what this means is we rely on other countries to fill the gaps, right? Where we're short on energy production. So we would need to produce as much energy as we consume with every single type of energy we produce. And once we do that, we're still not energy independent. No. You see, the price of a barrel of oil is based on global supply and demand fundamentals. And, <clears throat> excuse me, what this means is that if, if we got to the point where we didn't rely on anyone else uh, for any of our oil needs, the price of it would still be mostly influenced by foreign countries, mainly OPEC. Um, and if OPEC decided that oil should be 120 bucks, they could do that very easily by cutting production. And you will continue to see them do this in the future. So if we can't control the price of energy, then we aren't really energy independent, right? Another mistake a lot of people make is they think that um, we were energy independent under the Trump administration because prices were cheap. Um, energy independence does not correlate with the price. It doesn't matter what the price is. Based on the EIA's definition of energy independence, we are still energy independent to this day. And we have seen what prices have done the last two years. We've seen record prices, all while still being technically energy independent, according to the EIA's definition. So how do we become energy independent? Well, there's a couple of ways. Um, one is if all energy was renewable. Now that won't happen in our lifetime, not even close. Um, understand that if every new car sold in the United States starting tomorrow was an EV, it would be 15 to 20 years before even half the cars in the United States were electric. Yeah. Just think about that. So we're likely a couple of decades away, at least, from all new cars being EVs as it is. Even if it happens then, you have to understand, there's going to be different administrations moving to the White House. And just the way our government works, it makes everything crawl. Every, everything is very slow to materialize in this country. So the most realistic way for us to achieve independence, would let's be honest, is still a long shot, would be for us to produce all of the energy and all of the different types of energy that we need and have this energy traded solely within the United States and taken off the global market. Um, that way, no one else can impact the price we pay for energy. So simply put, that's it. Um, that is the problem with energy independence. That is why we are not energy independent and we're not going to be energy independent for a long time. In my opinion, I do understand there are people that believe that consuming more than you produce is being energy independent. But when you look at it from a logical perspective, it's simply not. If, if you rely on other countries for your supply and you also depend 
on other countries to keep the prices in check, even under your definition of energy independence, you're just not energy independent. Um, and you can't convince me that we are. And the reason you don't see more oil and gas experts like a Daniel Jurgen uh, come out and say this is because it's not in their best interest to do so. Which, when it comes to industry experts, they should just say what the truth is regardless of their best interest. So I have no uh, skin in the game on whether we are energy independent or not. And the truth is, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter if we're energy independent or not. Because if under the current definition of energy independence, we still rely on other countries for oil, and we still rely on them to set prices for us uh, largely, then that's not independence. And, and even if we achieve it, it still doesn't matter. Does that make sense? So that's my talk for today on energy independence. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Um, I haven't been on YouTube a lot lately, but I'm gonna start posting more videos on YouTube. So please ask your questions, uh, like, share, and subscribe. I hope you guys have a great weekend and I'll see you guys later.